So with that, we move on to our countdown of the nine greatest promos and interviews in WWE history. Again, this is a WWE-only list because I had to condense it down to nine, and I just I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it if I had uh, NWA promos and ECW promos. So this is a WWE-only list for that reason. Last week, I did number five. That was Hollywood Rock from Raw in Toronto in 2003. We're now down to the final four in this list. And this week, number four takes us back to Canada, this time to Montreal on the August 15th, 2005 episode of Monday Night Raw, six days before SummerSlam and the big icon versus legend main event between Hulk Hogan and Shawn Michaels. Uh, Yes, this is the famous HBK in Montreal promo. Anytime Shawn Michaels was anywhere in Canada, let alone in Montreal after 97, the heel heat that this guy generated was enough to just... You could heat an entire city for 10 winters with the heat that this guy got in Canada. Wrestlers would die to get the kind of heat that Shawn Michaels would get in Montreal. Hogan and Michaels on TV had been friends for months before this. Hogan saved Shawn from a a beatdown by Muhammad Hassan and Divari on a Raw show that was in Madison Square Garden. I remember that night vividly. I think it was maybe in April of that year. And then Michaels recruited Hogan to be his tag team partner in a match against Hassan and Divari. I think it was a backlash. So the two of them teamed up uh, a couple of times. And one of the times they teamed up after that was the July 4th, the Independence Day episode of Raw. The most patriotic of days to wrestle Kurt Angle and Carlito. That was the main event that night. And after they won, they were posing in the ring together. And then out of nowhere, Michaels just, boom, super kicks Hogan right in the face and leaves him laying. And the crowd booed. I cheered because for the first time since he came back from the back surgery in 02, we were finally going to get a chance to see heel Shawn Michaels. And heel HBK to me has always been the best HBK. Now, some people would argue that he never really turned heel. He only acted heelish for the feud with Hogan. And, th- and there is some merit to that. Okay, As much as I enjoyed this run, it pretty much ended with the Hogan match wasn't an issue where Sean was going around, you know, being a dick to everybody else so much. It, it was it was similar to the Hollywood Rock stuff that I mentioned last week, right? With Rock, it only lasted three or four months. It lasted even less time with Sean. Didn't even go that long. But with Rock, there was no doubt. He left you no doubt that this guy was a heel. He ripped on Hogan, Ironically, so there's another similarity between these two, right? They they both went heel for matches with Hulk Hogan. Uh, but he didn't just rip on Hogan. Rock mocked uh, the Hurricane. He mocked Stone Cold. He mocked the fans. Rock was just a total asshole. Sean, it was more like, I don't like Hulk Hogan, and I have to prove to myself that I'm better than him. Now, he did super kick Roddy Piper. He did super kick Jerry Lawler in the build-up to this match. But it's not like he was out there ragging on other guys or pointing to his crotch or, you know, any of that stuff. He never did anything that was really dastardly. But he was still a heel to me, and I I wish he would have gone on longer with it. Uh, This is the big go-home promo before their match at SummerSlam in a segment that I am positive went way longer than it was supposed to. But it was one of the greatest, uh, to this day, still one of the greatest heel promos of all time. And between this and the Rock one from last week, I, there's something special about these Canadian crowds. That's why I'm happy that they're finally bringing a, a major pay-per-view back to Toronto next month. The only other time I've, I've really heard somebody just totally manipulate a crowd the way they wanted to was The Rock. The Rock was awesome at that, and he did that in the promo last week in Toronto. And so we see the same thing here with Sean. He played it. He knew he didn't have to work very hard for it. He played it perfectly. Uh, I'm sure everybody was high-fiving when they went backstage after that segment. Uh, I fell. I remember watching this live. And I think I had read some stuff online earlier in the day about Brett. There were some rumors about Brett and maybe WWE was reaching out to him. I don't rem- it's, it's vague. I vaguely remember So I I, I didn't know that something might happen on the show, but I, I think I had kind of a sense that maybe something might happen and so I totally fell for the first music tease when he hit Brett's music I was like oh shit and you look at the crowd and you can see like there's like some kids in the front row that like their jaws drop they're they're going nuts 
everyone's standing up and you think here he comes and it just plays and plays and plays and then it's like, oh shit, he got me. I didn't fall for the second one. I laughed my ass off when Sean mocked the crowd for falling it for it the second time. And like he said, the first time is one thing. The second time, that's on you. But I, I also remember being disappointed when the show was over that night and Brett never showed up. Because for all the name dropping of Brett, and he must have mentioned Brett's name at least half a dozen times. Sean came back out later in the night. I think the main event was uh, Hulk Hogan wrestles somebody in the main event. And Sean came out and put him in the sharpshooter to end the show. So he, now he's using Brett's move. He's he's name dropped Brett at least half a dozen times. Now he's out there at the very end of the night putting him in the sharpshooter. At that point, you would think, okay, Brett's music is going to hit a second time, and people maybe are going to be like, all right, it's all bullshit. But then he actually walks out, and the place is going to explode, and it never happened. And so for all the mentions of Brett, it was disappointing, because they really made you think that this guy, they had some kind of a deal with him. Why else would they be mentioning him so many times? And when he didn't come out, it was actually a big letdown. Because I thought, okay, he's going to come out. Maybe they'll make him a referee for the match at SummerSlam. But he never showed up. And as far as the SummerSlam match itself, I think many of you are well aware of Sean's absurd, comically absurd, overselling during the match. I actually thought him and Hogan had a pretty good match. As good of a match as you can get at that point out of Hulk Hogan. And Hogan bled, and it was a good match. But Sean did make a mockery out of it. He did uh, oversell more than maybe I've ever seen somebody oversell in a match before. Uh, It's like when The Rock oversells the stunner. Imagine an entire match with that. (laughs) An entire match of Rock overselling moves like the stunner. It's basically what this was. And the reason for it was very simple. So the plan had been for them to have a two-match series. They were going to have the first match at SummerSlam... And they would come back at the next pay-per-view and have a rematch. And I guess Sean wanted to win the first match. Hogan had total creative control. And Hogan wanted to win. And so Hogan was going to win the first match. And I guess Sean's attitude was, okay, well, I'll come back in the second match. I think they were going to do the second match in a cage, maybe, at the next pay-per-view. And Sean would then win that one. So they'd win one each. And Hogan didn't go for that either. Hogan had no problem doing the second match, just provided they understood that he'd be winning that one as well. (laughs) Because he's just, he's an amazing man. And this, uh, it was a political game of chess. Shawn Michaels had built a reputation for himself that was not the greatest back in the 90s. And he also could be a master politician and a shit stirrer, but I think what he may have failed to realize was he was up against the master politician. He got outworked by somebody who was even better than him. And I'm sure he was not happy about that. We saw that on full display here in this match. uh, With him flopping around like a fish all over the place. We saw it the next night. When he came out on Raw, the very next night, he opened the show again with a promo for the second straight week, and he made a total mockery of Hulk Hogan. He acted like a, a spoiled little brat... He came out and he called Hogan, you know, he was cat-like and he was nimble. And he talked about Hogan's technical prowess and how he he fell like so many before me. I fell to the vicious leg drop. And then he said, Hogan's not here. He's on a jet back to Florida waiting to come back for more money. And then Chris Masters came out to interrupt. And Sean was back on to his next feud. Like this one had never happened. He was still a total dick. In that segment, even though he was back to being a babyface against Chris Masters here. You could just tell. Just look at his performance in the match and the words that he said here in this promo the next night. You could tell. He was not happy. He was not happy about losing to Hulk. He was not happy about not being able to get his win back. He got out-politicked. He got outworked by the master. That's just how it goes sometimes. And Hogan, we didn't see Hogan again, I think, for uh, until the following summer. I think he came back the following summer. That's when he had the match with Randy Orton, which, of course, he won that match as well. One of a kind. Hulk Hogan is truly one of a kind. 